Hey, welcome back. My name is Al. I need you to drop in an object because we are going to start animating inside of Maya. Now, this is very, very basic stuff, but with an object selected, we can left click and drag on the timeline or just left click to go to a new frame. So I'm going to go in this case to frame zero. If yours is one, that's fine. And I'm going to press S on the keyboard. Now, anytime I say scrub through the timeline, that means left click and drag on the timeline, or you can press play. I've got one keyframe, and this is right where I want the cylinder at frame one. I'm gonna go to frame 24, just so we can make things easy. And then the process is repose my object. In this case, although this isn't a character with joints and bones and everything, I need to move, rotate, or scale, or a combination of those three, this object. So that's what I mean when I say repose. So I reposed, then I press S. So if I press period and comma on my keyboard, I can snap and bounce between the first frame and the second frame. But Maya has filled in everything in between, which is super awesome. Let's go ahead and press play. But you'll notice it just feels wrong or it should feel wrong. The reason for this is this is going way too fast. So currently I'm animating at 24 frames a second. If I were you, I would just keep this at 24 frames a second. If you're doing film like TV, movies, you know, that type of animation, if you are in video game world, go ahead and do 30. But for this, we'll just use 24. We're gonna keep that the same and it's just too fast. And what that means is every 24 frames, one second IRL should have passed. In real life, one second of time will have passed. But if I were to start a stopwatch right now, that is from here to here is not one second. Maya is an idiot sometimes. And by default, this is set to play every frame. So what I need you to do is right click your timeline, go up to playback speed, set this to real time. You should only have to do this once and then go back to the frame zero press play. This is playing at 24 frames a second. So that's awesome. Let's go through that process once more of animating. So I'm at frame 24. Let's go to a new frame, repose my object. In this case, I'm going to press R and scale it down and then press S. So now I go over and then it scales and it shrinks. So new frame, I'm going to repose my object. When I like it, I'm going to press S. Scrub through my timeline to see what's happening. If right here from point A to point B, you're like, oh, I didn't want it to slide over. I wanted it to jump, right? We could come somewhere in between. So we're still picking a new frame. We're reposing this object S. And now I've changed this animation, at least in between here. So instead of sliding, it's going over, but it's also going up. So now it kind of jumps and then it does the rest of my animation. Now, remember this is on a per object basis, meaning if I drop in a torus, the cylinder has these keyframes, but this has no keyframes whatsoever. So I have to go through and animate this all by itself. So press S, go to a new frame. We're gonna repose this. We're just gonna do something crazy like that. Press S, there we go. Let's go to a new frame, repose, press S and press play to see it happening. Okay, so let's say you need a longer animation. Currently, we're at 240 frames. Let's say we want something else to happen here. Let's say way at the end at 240, we would like this to go that direction. And this is gonna be very slow once it gets from here to here. We're gonna talk about timing in just a second. Oh, looks like I forgot to set a keyframe. Come here, move it over, press S, there we go. And it's like, dang it, I need more frames. So if you need more frames, put in whatever number you'd like here. I'm gonna put in 500, press enter. And then this is kind of like zooming in and out of my timeline. So grabbing this white box and pulling to the right means I'm at 500 and this one, I'm all the way to the left with whatever number this is set to. So I can zoom in and I can zoom out on my timeline if I need to. Now I've got more frames, so I can go past 240. Go ahead and move this over, press S, do whatever kind of animating that I need to do. So let's talk about timing. I'm gonna get a new scene, file, new scene, don't save. Let's drop in a cube. I'm gonna set this number to one. I prefer that. I don't really like animating on frame zero. I'm gonna press S on frame one, and then I'm gonna go to frame 24, and I'm gonna move this over and press S. So this cube is gonna move to that point in one second time because it's 24 frames. So that took one second. Now, if that is way too fast, what I can do is adjust this. Two ways to do it. I could go to this frame, repose, meaning, ooh, I can move it way out here and press S. Now it's going faster, but the animation has actually changed. So let's undo that. What if I wanna keep it at, so what if I wanna keep 
this animation exactly the same, just take more time. So I'm gonna hold shift, left click and drag on my timeline and that's gonna highlight and use these middle arrows to pull. So now if I pull very far this way, the gap in between point A and point B is much larger on my timeline. It's still going exactly the same distance here, but look what happens when I press play. This is going at like a snail's pace because there's more frames in between those keyframes. Now, alternatively, if I hold shift, left click and drag to highlight, middle mouse click and drag, I'm gonna move this to around 10. And now when I press play, this is much faster than before and even faster than our first one. Our first one was at 24 frames. So this is like twice as fast, but the same keyframes. I just changed how many frames were in between. Okay, so we're animating. This is great. What if I want this box to come over here and then disappear? So the whole time we've been pressing S, it has been setting keyframes on our channel box. All of these channels, X, Y, and Z for rotate, translate, to scale, and visibility. And what that means is I could come here. Actually, let's have the box come over. Let's have him. This is like a cheap way to do squash and stretch. That is not the correct way. I'm just scaling him down. You know, that that's not good. Squash down, and then I want him to shoot up. Let's do something like that. And then launch him into the air. There's my little animation. And I want him to disappear right here when he gets to frame 26. So what I can do is on visibility, I can change this value to zero and now it's off. This light red mean there's been a change, but there isn't a keyframe there. So I can just press S again, or I can right click key selected. So now he's off. Now there's no transition. This is just immediately as soon as he gets to that frame, boom, it's off and he's on the whole time. If I ever want him to turn back on, Let's say I want it to wait this many frames. So I'm gonna press S and nothing's happening in between here. I didn't change anything. And now one frame later, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. He's on, I'm gonna press S. So now he jumps up, disappears for a little bit, and then he's gonna turn back on. This is super helpful when you're doing a visibility swap, which we'll talk about at a later time. Okay, so hopefully that was a, a, a decent introduction to setting keyframes, manipulating keyframes inside of Maya.